Welcome to this Christ Church service of morning prayer. We're so glad you're worshiping with us this morning. Our service is printed in the attached bulletin and begins in your prayer book on page 76. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Dearly beloved, we've come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most, Most merciful God, God we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory, glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Saying together the Jubilate on page 82. Be joyful, Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Psalm 139 is found on page 794 in the Book of Common Prayer. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. 
And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. Here ends the lesson. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty He promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his From the Gospel of John. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law 
and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Let us pray. Open our hearts, O God, enlighten our minds, and kindle our spirits, that we may receive and transmit the gift of your love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The wider church has a phrase, it's in Latin, I, I don't know Latin real well, but here it goes, Lex orande, lex credende. It basically means we believe what we pray and we pray what we believe. It's a good way of summing up our approach to the prayer book. We believe what we pray. What's there in the prayer book is what we believe. It's part of our theology. And we pray what we believe. When we pray, we're expressing our deepest longings, our deepest desires. And this is the reality of prayer book worship as much as it lines up with scripture, which it normally does. And so thinking about that, how does the prayer book make help us believe? Well, let's look at today's collect. Today's collect, the prayer that we say at the beginning of the service, I think preaches today's text by itself. First off, though, what is a collect? Well, a collect, again, it's a Latin word from collecta, meaning meant the gathering of people together. And it may have been applied to these kinds of prayers, as they're said, either before the procession that started the church service or before the beginning of other church services. It may also have been used to mean a prayer that collected into one the prayers of the individual members of the congregation. In our morning online morning prayer services, we often pray at the end the general thanksgiving, which is a long collect. It collects our prayers together and wraps them up. It has a nice fitting conclusion. It's a prayer that we say collectively. And so a collect generally has five points, five parts. The first part is the invocation or the address. It indicates the person of the Trinity that the prayer is addressed to, usually God the Father. The second part of the collect is the, is the acknowledgement. It's a description of a divine attribute that relates to the petition. The third part of the collect is the petition, where we ask God for something that we need or that we want. The fourth part of the collect is the aspiration. It's an indication of the further purpose of the petition. It's us telling God why we want or need that thing that we've just asked for in the petition. And then the fifth part is the pleading. It's the conclusion of the prayer. And we usually pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit or through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the colic then concludes, as all our prayers do, with the word amen. Let it be. And so how does today's collect preach today's text? Let's look at the collect and follow the logic if you'll turn back to the beginning of your service. Our collect begins, our today's collect begins with the invocation. It begins, Almighty God. That's who we're addressing in this prayer, Almighty God. And then we have this acknowledgement. Who is it? Who is God? What, what does he do for us? And so the acknowledgement in today's prayer is, Whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. That's what we're acknowledging. The Son of God the Father is our Savior, Jesus Christ, and he is the light of the world. And then we move into this petition, knowing that we're addressing our prayer to God the Father, and that uh, the purpose of our prayer has something to do with Jesus being the light of the world, we then ask God something. 
Grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory. There in the prayer, we have this idea that Jesus shines through word and sacraments, that sacraments being baptism and communion. It's in those three things, the proclamation of the word, baptism, and communion that we see Christ most clearly. And the word and sacraments then illumine God's people. They bring to our eyes, to our minds, to our hearts, the truth of God with us. And then as a result, God's people shine with the radiance of Christ's glory. So that's what we're asking. Grant your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory. Fourthly, we have the aspiration that he, this is Jesus, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. That's what our hope is. We're hoping that we, God's people, will be illumined by the word and sacraments and shine forth the radiance of Christ's glory in order that Jesus may be known, Jesus is worshipped, and Jesus is obeyed by all to the ends of the earth. All means all. And then we close our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. So going back to this pattern of lex orande, lex credende, how does this pattern play out in real life? Well, how does this pattern play out in our gospel lesson for today? Our gospel lesson about Jesus, Philip, and Nathaniel. Well, first we have the acknowledgement, whose son Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Jesus, the light of the world, decides to go to Galilee. That's where he's going to shine in today's story. And the light shines through Jesus' word, his proclamation of the gospel, what he's teaching, what he's proclaiming to those around him. And maybe it also shines, we don't have the sacrament of communion yet, but the sacrament of baptism, John's baptism for the repentance of sins. And people are recognizing in this that God is doing something. So the light shines through Jesus' word. We know that at least that much. And so then the word illumines God's people. And in this situation, it illumines Philip. Philip has an epiphany. The light bulb goes off. He's illuminated. And he says, and when Jesus calls to him, follow me, he follows. God's people are illumined and they reflect who Jesus is. So now as a follower of Jesus, he's reflecting who Jesus is. He's reflecting Jesus's glory. And what happens when people reflect Jesus's glory? Well, it shines. It reflects to others. God's people shine. Philip tells Nathaniel, we have found him. Come and see. And so Nathaniel has an epiphany this day as well. Philip has the first epiphany straight from Jesus. Nathaniel's epiphany comes through Philip. It's mediated through Philip. Philip, his friend, says, come and see. He's reflecting Jesus to Nathaniel. Come and see. We have found him. We have found him that Moses wrote of. We have found the Messiah. And so what's the end result? We have Nathan. Nathan knows Jesus now. He calls him rabbi. Rabbi just being a general term of acknowledgement of who Jesus is as a human being, who he is as a teacher. He worships Jesus. He says, Rabbi, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. Those are not light words. Those are words that can only come about because Nathaniel has been illumined by the presence of Jesus through Philip. His mind, his heart, his emotions have been illumined to who Jesus is, and Jesus shines in him. So he knows, he worships, and then he obeys. He goes and follows Jesus. He becomes one of Jesus' closest disciples. And so we see this pattern that the, the college lays out. We see the pattern that the college lays out then here in our gospel reading. But where can and where does this pattern break down? How do we see this in real life and why doesn't it always work in real life? Well, one reason is that sometimes the word and the sacraments are not duly administered. Jesus doesn't shine through the word and the sacraments. This often happens when preachers and teachers take the word and twist it and distort it 
It's supposed to reflect Jesus. It's supposed to shine forth Jesus, but instead it shines forth something else. It shines through their agenda. It shines through the false teaching. It shines through something else. When it holds up, Jesus doesn't shine. Or sometimes light shines on the wrong things. Sometimes we think that the word and the sacrament are the be-all, end-all. But in fact, these things, as the church often reminds us, are signposts. You don't, you don't go and celebrate when you've arrived at a signpost. You celebrate when you've arrived to what the signpost is pointing towards. And so if, there's, if the light shines on the wrong things, if the word and the sacraments are celebrated for themselves and not for who they point to, Jesus, then it breaks down. Another way it may, breaks down is within us. As the call it indicates, uh, the light is shown on us and we are meant to reflect that light back out to others. Reflect the glory of Christ back out to each other. And so in this way, we can think our, of ourselves as mirrors. Light shining on us, bouncing off of us, and reflecting to others so that they can see who Jesus is. But mirrors marred by sin don't reflect God's glory. That's what Paul tells us in the 2 Corinthians reading. When we as Christians involve ourselves in sin, when we connect ourselves to sin in very deep and personal ways, very deep and emotional ways, when we stop reflecting Jesus, we will reflect something else. Our mirrors will be marred by sin so that we don't reflect God's glory. Instead, we might reflect our dirt, that sin, that muck that we scoop onto ourselves, that we participate in, those things that do not reflect Christ, but only reflect our poor character. But there's an answer to that. The answer to that is not to give up and say, well, I've I, I, can't, I can't shine this light to others. I can't be reflective. There's no hope for me. There's no hope for anyone else around me because they can't see my light. No, instead we have this process that theology calls sanctification. The process by which our mirrors are made clean. Jesus wipes us clean again so that Jesus can clearly be seen. We acknowledge our dirt and he wipes it away. So how have we experienced the truth of this collect in our own lives? When have we seen God's glory? Perhaps you've seen God's glory in the word being proclaimed, in the sacraments, whether at communion or at a baptism. I remember uh, one time, right before I, I came here as uh, associate, actually, and I was at church, and I came to take communion, and I had this sudden realization of what this meant that here I am holding this bread, tasting this wine, and it's a reflection of Christ's love for me. It shows how much he loved me, so much that he would give himself for me. And, and not just in a, in a mental way, not just in a uh, cognitive way or some type of mystical way, but in a very real way, holding a piece of Jesus, taking him as my own. Jesus loves us so much, we can see his glory. When have we marred our mirrors? Paul, again, in, in the epistle reading says, glorify God in your bodies. That is, make sure that your, that your bodies are clean and pure so that they can shine forth God's light, God's glory to others. And so sometimes we recognize that our sin, the muck and the grime that we get ourselves into, the poor decisions, our own rebellion that we make, go and they, they deflect, they mar our mirror. And so God's light does, is not able to shine through us. We're not able to proclaim, we're not able to shine forth light, God's glory. And when have we reflected God's glory to others? You see, in today's reading, it's set in the time of the church calendar as Epiphany. And it's because both Philip and Nathaniel have epiphanies. They both come to realize who Jesus is. Philip kind of directly from Jesus through the word, but Nathaniel through Philip. 
as we reflect God's glory, we can become an epiphany. You may be someone else's epiphany as you proclaim in word and deed what Christ has done for you, reflecting God's glory for you. And so as we go forth today, we echo the words of, of Philip when he says to Nathaniel, we have found him. Come and see. Let us, as image reflectors of Christ, reflect who Christ is, point to who Christ is in word and deed as we go out this week, as we discover him in scripture and understand him in the sacraments. Amen. Saying together the Apostles' Creed on page 96 in your prayer book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray, saying together the words our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be, no, that, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us lift our hearts to the one who calls us, saying, We call to you, O Lord, and we are listening. We pray for the church that the hearts of the leaders and those who are led be turned toward you. Call us to support your work in the world through the church. We pray for Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Robert Wright, our bishop, and Cynthia and Zach, our priests. We call to you, O Lord, and we are listening. We pray for those who govern the nations of the world that their leadership be wise and compassionate. Call us to informed and cooperative citizenship. We pray for our president, our governor, the Congress, and courts of the land. We call to you, O Lord, and we are listening. We pray for people in every corner of the world, especially for those who lack adequate food, shelter, and hope. Call us to compassionate action. We pray for all who are suffering and those assisting others in care due to COVID-19. We call to you, O Lord, and we are listening. We pray for those close to our hearts 
who suffer from illness, anxiety, who face challenges and transitions, who struggle with your will and their lives. We pray today for Amanda, Ashley, Bailey, Brandy, Candy, Charlie, Christy, Crawford, Elizabeth, George, Helen, Herkley, Hunter, Jay, Janie, Jennifer, John, Libby, Linda, Kelly, Malcolm, Margaret, Mary, Mary Louise, Matthew, Melanie, Nancy, Pammy, Pete, Pat, Peter, Ray, Rob, and Sandy. We call to you, O Lord, and we are listening. We pray for those who will be born this day, that they will be embraced by loving communities. We pray for those who are dying and those who now rest in your eternal embrace, especially Carolyn Simmons. Loving God, we call to you, and we are listening. We give thanks for the marriage of Marissa and Rhett Hudson. Please add your own prayers, either silently or aloud. give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray. Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, he will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.